Yes, sir. I radioed for backup, got out of my patrol vehicle, and approached the defendant's vehicle. Then when did you search for the gun? Objection. Absolutely no foundation. Furthermore, the prosecutor, though well-meaning, is leading the witness just a trifle. Sustained. Please rephrase your question. What happened that night, officer? Objection. Now counsel is calling for a narrative. Sustained. Rephrase. Did you see anything as you approached the defendant's vehicle? Yes. Located in plain view under the back of the driver's seat was what appeared to be the stock of a rifle or shotgun. I immediately ordered the defendant out of his vehicle and retrieved the weapon. Did you examine the weapon? Yes, I did. It was a 12-gauge shotgun. The barrel was warm and it... Well, Frank, we've been expecting you. When'd you get in? Uh, uh, just now. Uh, how are we doing? We're all doing fine. Hmm. Courtroom of the future, huh? That's what we hope. First time you've seen it? Actually, yes, I've been over the plans a dozen times, but I wanted to get a look at it before the uh, dedication. Because I really want to see Frank Jr. in action. Now, how does all this video work? Well, the courtroom is configured so that the jury faces the proceedings. Notice the television monitor in front of them. Oh, uh, Mr. Beat, huh? If the attention of any one of the jury stray from the proceedings, he can immediately focus on the monitor, which is covering the action. From this room, they record every single thing that goes on in the courtroom. I should get you an assistant. Hey, the way I got this place rigged, nobody can run it but me. Keeps me indispensable. <laughs> Let's go. <Yeah. clears throat> the shotgun was located in plain view. Now, you're telling us, Sergeant, that a man who's been painted by the prosecution as having planned his entire crime with military precision speeds from the vicinity of the crime at 90 miles an hour with the alleged murder weapon in plain view? <laughs> Do you think we are idiots here? Is it not true, sir, that last year in three separate criminal trials, you testified to discovering evidence in plain view and that subsequent investigation revealed that you had indeed planted such evidence? And weren't you subsequently tried for perjury? What? Mr. Wellman, you're out of order. I'm not out of order. Answer the question. Yes, I was tried for perjury, but I was acquitted. The jury will disregard this last piece of testimony. You can't instruct the jury to disregard. There's been no objection and no motion to strike. The court makes its own objection and orders the testimony to be stricken. Therefore, the jury will disregard. Satisfied, Mr. Wellman? And where are your objections, Mr. Prosecutor? Hmm? Don't let all this power go to your head, Jeff. I'm through. We'll stand recess until tomorrow. <laughs> well, I call that aggressive advocacy. And I'd agree with you. Uh, sorry, Frank, but I have to get back to work. I really appreciate you coming to teach a seminar. I know Frank Jr. feels the same about having you for a teacher. I'll be seeing you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and have dinner? Yeah, all right. No, you know, I, I, I'd better stay back here and, and work on my summation a little bit. It's okay. Well, breakfast at my hotel. Okay? All right. Now, give him hell, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe what I just saw. It borders on the incomprehensible. Mr. McDonald, you had grounds for objection. Mr. Wellman badgered your witness and extracted inadmissible evidence. Now, where were you? I thought if I gave Frank enough rope, he'd hang himself. That isn't good enough. I expect Scott thought that the judge would have called Frank on it. Miss McDonald, you're his sister, and your loyalty is commendable. But, Mr. McDonald, as a prosecutor, your duty is to prevent defense counsel from misusing the rules of evidence. Don't smile, Frank. If Jeff had been doing his job, you'd be cited for contempt. I agree. You're clever and articulate, Mr. Wellman. 
But a jury is a complex organism, just a group of ordinary people. They haven't studied Aristotelian logic. Their individual honesty may come and go as it does for all of us. When they become a jury, they take on an intelligence that you must never underestimate and an integrity that you must never, never insult. Until tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for your comments, Mr. Mason. It is an honor being in your class. I'll remember what you said. Thank you. And Frank. When you make your summation tomorrow, use some sincerity. Ted! Look, I know I've been remote, but I need to see you. Well, that's quite a change. Don't make it any more difficult, please. Okay. Okay. How about now? I'm sorry, I can't. Scott and I have some things to do. Kimberly, what is the matter? Why can't you just come out and tell me? Yeah. Why don't you give her a break? Scott, please. Just try to understand. I'd like to. Last week, you were in love with me. Now I can't get you on the phone. I leave messages in your study, Carol, which you don't return. If it weren't for this damn mock trial, I wouldn't see you at all. Kim. Don't listen to your brother. For once, do what you want. Come see me tonight. I don't get it. Around 7 o'clock, okay? con law exam or how about those broncos or maybe ken the reason i've been treating you so bad is because i'm schizo i'll be in the library well this was a mistake i'm sorry i never should have had you come kimberly tell him tell Why him wait a minute just leave her alone, Wait Ken. A minute. Just leave What's her alone. With her? What's going on? It's Frank. He's the reason she's been acting so strange. What's he got to do with it? I probably shouldn't be telling you this. But a couple of nights ago, he came up to her in the library and he wanted to talk to her about some pretrial motions for the uh, moot court. Moot court doesn't have pretrial motions. No kidding. But you know that he's been crazy about her since the first year, right? Anyway, they went over to the Ivy to have some beers. Before you know it, he's drunk, too drunk to drive, and uh, she had to drive him home. Go on. 
all of a sudden he uh, he threw her down on the floor, ripped open her blouse, and tried to rape her. He didn't. No, she fought him off, but he he really hurt her. I mean, I woke up because I heard her crying in the bathroom. She made me promise not to say anything. She was so scared. Ken, that's the reason she hasn't wanted to see you. She's afraid that go oh, Ken! Couldn't see who it was. Whether it was a man or a woman. Are you aware it was your knife that was used to kill him? My knife? It had your initials on it. Mr. Mason, someone stole that knife from me two weeks ago. You don't believe me? There are several top defense attorneys in Denver. I'll speak to one first thing in the morning. I called you. Ken, I'll find you the very best. Look, sir, I want to be a lawyer. I worked hard to get into this school and I don't want it taken away from me for something I didn't do. You always told us that the accused is entitled to the best possible defense. And you're the best defense attorney I could have. I'm innocent, damn it. And I just... And I need someone to believe that. Mostly you. That's a hell of a thing, isn't it? This is our law school, Perry, yours and mine. Gets killed here. Frank, don't think about it. He would have been a good lawyer, wouldn't he? More than good. We had our problems. Any kid does today. I was so proud of him. He was doing such a terrific job. Turned his whole life around. The 
young man accused of the murder phoned me. I went to see him. He confessed? He wants me to represent him. What did you say? I told him no. I'm not sure it was the right thing to do. No. It's other good lawyers. He asked for me. Frank, if I walk away from this young man... Because of our friendship, hmm? Now, isn't that enough? I don't know. Next in order, People versus Ken Melansky. Are the people ready? Marilyn Anson of the District Attorney's Office. The people are ready, Your Honor. And do you have counsel, Mr. Melansky? No, Your Honor. And this proceeding will be put over. If it's a matter of expense, the state will provide a lawyer. Do you wish this court to appoint one for you? That won't be necessary, Your Honor. I recognize you, Mr. Mason. And what are you doing here? I'm representing the defendant. Understated, yet beautiful. Roses are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. I was describing you. The roses are the least I could do for cutting your trip short. Oh, the cruise. Mm-hmm, yes. Starry nights, tropical skies, gourmet food, and the best big band since the immortal Glenn Miller. After four days, I was so bored I could have jumped ship, even without your call. I am more than appreciative. Mm -hmm. How are you? And uh, how's poor Mr. Wellman? Well, Frank's taking taking it very hard. Uh, his boy mm -hmm. was his whole life. Della, I want you to look into Frank Jr.'s past. See who else might have had a motive. Any idea where to start? Two days before the murder, he allegedly tried to rape Ken Melansky's girlfriend. Allegedly? Her name's Kimberly. Kimberly McDonald. She's also a law student. Same class as Frank Jr. I want you to talk to Kimberly. Right. Perry. How does Frank Wellman feel about this? I'm, I mean, you're representing Ken Malansky. He doesn't know yet. Ooh. I'm going to need all the background you can get me on the students in my class. Mm -hmm. Give me ten minutes, I'll be right on it. I want you to rent a car. Meet me at the courthouse. Ken's being arraigned this afternoon. Anything else? Why, yes. There's a list on the desk. We have two choices. One is to ignore the tragedy that occurred here. The way we've been sitting here pretending that tape isn't there? Or we can look closely at all of it. You mean make Ken's defense part of the class? Not exactly. But there's a great deal we can learn from what's happened. But suppose Ken's lying. Suppose he's actually guilty. Every defendant comes into court presumed innocent. Now, what's my first line of attack? 
Ken said someone was already here when he came in. Besides Frank, I mean. Well, if Ken didn't do it, then that man was the murderer. Or a woman. A good start. However, the security guard claims he was on duty all night. He let no one else in here except Frank. Where does that leave us? In deep trouble. The classic murder in a locked room. Then what becomes the critical question? Where the person hid? Mr. McDonald? No. Who knew Frank would be here that night? Very good. Who would have known? The only people who'd know for sure would be the people in this class. Who else? You knew. Yes, I did. And Frank's father? And the security guard? All right, let's strike the three of us from the list of suspects. What is your inevitable conclusion? One of us is the killer. But we all left together. Did you? I left with Scott. And then we both saw Ken outside. Did anyone see me leave? I ran into you at the cafeteria. Fine, then we're each other's alibi. Yes. That leaves me. I left alone. Actually, I saw you from the window of my office getting into your car in the parking lot. If nobody hid in here, where does that leave us? Miss Lehman. There's got to be another key. Right. So one of us has to be the killer. Right. Now, please consider that until our next meeting. In fact, since I'm now defending Ken Malansky, expect me to intrude on each one of you at any time. That's all, thank you. Congratulations. What for? Getting our interest. You certainly put us all in the middle of Ken's defense. And your own. The um, court has reviewed counsel's motion for bail, as well as the people's response. We find the defendant has no ties to this jurisdiction beyond his enrollment in school here. No residence, no job, no family. Therefore, flight is a real possibility. The crime that he's been charged with is a capital offense. Accordingly, the court sets bail at $250,000. Thank you, Your Honor. Why didn't you just say 10 million or 20? There's no way. Uh, Marshal, I'd like a minute with my client. Take as much time as you want. His bail's made. Are you sure? Bell Bondsman came in here before the hearing, guaranteed any amount up to a million. Damnedest thing. Hey! What do you think you're doing here? Paying your bail. Why? Kenny, there's been something I've been desperate to say to you, and... Well, I, I couldn't bear to do it if you were behind bars. There's nothing, absolutely nothing that you have to say to me. Nothing. Except this. Young lady. Who? I'm his fiance, of course. Of course. We were never engaged. On the technicality that you never gave me a ring. On the technicality that I never proposed. Mr. Mason, you strike me as a fair-minded man. May I ask you a question? No. If a man says to you, I love you, I can't live without you, I want to be together forever... I never what? said that. Exactly. Miss Hastings, first a quarter of a million dollars bail, then physical assault, then verbal assault. I'd say you were sending Ken a mixed message. You mean, what is it I want? Mm -hmm. For public consumption, after he ran out on me, I told everyone I tossed him out and never wanted to see him again. But privately, honestly, don't tell Ken because he's already too conceited, but I'm still crazy about him. Your secret is safe with me. And by the way, 
Mr. Mason. Ken may be what my grandmother used to call a cad. Lord knows he's not terribly bright. But he's not a killer. And on the romantic front, I intend to pursue you until you catch me. Does she always approach life this simply? Today she was a little reserved. Meeting you, I guess. Tell me, you really ran out on her? You may have guessed her family's rich, not rich like Wellman. We're talking generations, money with a pedigree. That bothered you? No, I've got nothing against being rich. I'd like to be rich. And I was in love with her, was. Then she started making all these plans about what I do, what we do. So when the scholarship to law school came along, I told her it couldn't work out. Obviously, there's no feeling left. None. None at all. I'm in love with Kimberly. Your first year here, most of your professors called you brilliant. Then all your drive seemed to disappear. You refused law review. Something must have happened. I'd like to know what that was. Lots of people are first year wonders, then they burn out. And some make remarkable progress, like Frank Wellman. I don't know. He would never have stayed in school without help. Someone coached him, probably even wrote his papers for him, sacrificed her own career for him. How did you know? Was it that obvious? To me it was. The way you looked at him was. The first time I saw Frank, I was sitting on the law school steps, eating my lunch out of a paper sack. It was the second week of class, and he was just arriving to register because he had been in Europe on vacation. Anyway, he, uh, he got out of a sports car that cost more than a Wall Street lawyer makes in a year. The sun was behind him, and he, he almost glowed. I thought to myself, even with the top down, his hair looked perfect. <laughs> he, of course, didn't even know I existed. Until the class standings came up. He, uh, came to my study, Carol, the next day. I, uh, I spent that night in his apartment and, um... I was there three nights a week, every week after that. Yes, I knew exactly what was going on, and no, I wasn't kidding myself, but a couple of weeks ago, he told me that it was over. I knew it was coming. I mean, I knew it was inevitable, but I didn't turn out to be as tough as I thought I was. And after he rejected you, he assaulted your roommate. Yes. You told Ken deliberately, didn't you? You really wanted him to hurt Frank. Oh. Oh, it's not the way you make it sound. I mean, <laughs> I loved him. <laughs> I'm still in love with him right now. I wanted Ken to hurt him. But I never wanted him dead. You've got to believe me. I'd like to. If Ken needs me, tell him I'm at the library, okay?
Travis. Me. Where you been? Got out on bail yesterday. Two hundred fifty thousand bucks. You never guess who paid it. That girl I went out with before, Kimberly. The crazy one. Well, she's still crazy. Hurry up, Blair. I just got back from the gym. Hi. Hi. Surprised you're still talking to me under the circumstances. I'm so incredibly sorry about all this. I know what you're going through. I just want you to know that I believe in you. to interrupt. Actually, I, I didn't hear you come in because of the shower which I was taking because the water pressure at my hotel is so awful. Isn't that typical? <sighs> Kenny, can you get me a, a towel for, for my hair? Because You must be Travis's new girlfriend. Travis? My roommate? Your boyfriend? <sighs> <laughs> oh. oh. He's so gallant. <laughs> Trying to protect your sensitivity. Actually, I'm not anybody's new anything. Dress, I'm his fiance. Watch. His almost fiance. You're the girl that broke his heart. You told her that? How sweet. Amy paid my bail yesterday. Call me crazy. I beg your pardon. How'd you get in here? Travis, let me in. I told him we were very old, very dear friends. He was surprised. He said you'd never mentioned my name. I was a little hurt. Anyway, I just felt horrible after I left today because no matter how terrible you were, physical violence is never the answer. Physical violence? Her idea of a joke. I slugged him. A solid left. Of course, I was immediately overcome with remorse, so I came by today to apologize, and then I felt a little grubby, so I decided to take a shower. I should really leave. I'm sure you two have a lot to talk about. No, no, we, we don't, honestly. You're his new girlfriend. Kenny, I can't be jealous. She's lovely. Are you a law student also? That's right. And smart, too. I'd better go. I just came by to let you know I'm here if you need me. I think that's terrific. Amy? It was very nice meeting you. What the... Ken, did you really tell her I broke your heart? I told her you were spoiled, selfish, self-centered, irresponsible. Stop! I now remember how relieved I was I didn't actually marry you. From now on, my interest in you is strictly financial. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? I intend to protect my money. I'm not letting you out of my sight. The aftermath of murder can be a tedious business, Mr. McDonald. You're not an easy man to find. You make it sound like I'm trying to avoid you. That would make sense if you were the killer. Except I've got no motive. The man tried to rape your sister. I know. But you didn't tell me. How old were the two of you when your parents died? We were only three. Just out of curiosity. Who's older? I am. Twelve minutes. Guess that makes me the big brother. You're really inseparable, aren't you? Same <laughs> undergraduate college. Kimberly even came to the same law school. Yes, that's right. So you want me to believe that she didn't tell you that Wellman assaulted her? If you don't believe me, why don't you ask her? Hello, Mr. Nelson. Are you all right? Yes, it's just... <sighs> I hope I'm not interrupting, but are you about finished? Just winding up. Why don't you walk me out? He probably wants to ask you some questions alone. 
You're quite correct. Okay. You still think the killer was someone from our seminar? They are the only ones who knew Frank was staying in the courtroom. Mr. Mason, rather than just sitting around, would it be okay if I went back to the courtroom? Checked it out? All right, Ken, I'll arrange it, but I want you to be careful. Right. There's uh, one other thing. It's Kimberly. Actually, it's Kimberly and Amy. You noticed. <laughs> it's hard to miss. Kimberly's a terrific girl. Lord knows she's pretty. And then there's Amy. She's crazy. I mean, she can be wonderful, too. She posted my bail, and I'm grateful. But she's out of control. I never know what she's going to do next. Some people call that exciting. I know. If you're asking for my advice, I think right now, you have to concentrate on the trial. You mean give them both up? I mean make a choice. And stick to it. Right. Thanks. You were such a basketball fan. Right now, the only scouting I'm doing is for a murder suspect. <laughs> and this will be the shortest interview you ever get. I got no motive. That's not what the law firm of O'Malley and Kern would say. Listen, it's true I wanted the summer job there. That's a very prestigious firm. It's also true I was disappointed, but I got over it. Before or after you beat up Frank Wilman? He told them I had a drug problem. That the reason I didn't try for the pros was I test positive. That must have made you very angry. It was a lie. All of it. I didn't try for the pros. Be I didn't try for the pros because I knew I wasn't good enough. He knew that. And that big-time firm would only take one guy from our class. And even with his dad's pull, he couldn't buy his way in. Unless he got rid of me first. If you had gotten that job, it could have meant a great placement after graduation. Frank was a bastard. Look, I'll be real honest with you. I'm not sorry Frank's dead. There's something else I'll be straight about. I didn't kill him. Here's something I'll be straight about. You're still angry enough to have killed him. you to do. You picked a hell of a time to propose. <laughs> I really appreciate you putting up my bail. It was a terrific thing to do. Why do I think the next word is but? But I want you to leave. It's just too distracting having you around. Distract you for whom? You or Kimberly? This has nothing to do with anybody else. I'm on trial for murder. I'm in trouble. Oh. I just can't think about anything else. Come on. You don't believe me. Kenny, it doesn't matter. It's okay, I understand. Look, I love to joke around, but I am serious about one thing. Wanting what's best for you and for you to be happy. <laughs> I guess that's two things, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks. Just one more thing. What? This. Good luck. 
can't understand what's keeping Perry. Oh, he was like that even in law school. You know, nobody worked harder. What was he really like in those days? He was a grind. Nose in the book all the time. No time for anything else. Of course, it was people like him that made people like me quit the law and go into business. So. Have you ever had any regrets on that decision? I've been pretty lucky. Um, about most things, I guess. Oh, Frank, it was a terrible tragedy. We're both so very sorry. Well, hello. I'm going to talk to you, Perry. I'll get the uh, pretrial motions in your office. 37 years. We've been friends 37 years, and you're going to represent this boy that murdered my son? I think he's innocent. I read the police reports. He's guilty as hell. How can you do this to me? Ken Melansky wanted me to defend him. Our relationship should have nothing to do with that. Oh. Well, why are you doing this in-depth investigation of Frank Jr.? What are you going to do, put him on trial? Well, that's a standard defense tactic, isn't it, when you don't have a case? Huh? Try the victim? Well, I'm not going to stand by while you drag my boy through the mud. I believe Ken Melansky is innocent. I'm entitled to every fact I can find. I'm entitled to search everywhere, even into your son's life. Well, I'm entitled, as an old friend, to ask you to stop. The boy's dead. I appreciate your grief. I even share it. I have no desire to make it any worse. <sighs> Disappointed in you, Perry. I'm very sorry. I have no choice. Who's there? slam the door on a man bringing you flowers, could you? They're lovely, thank you. But I have to study. Can't you take five minutes to hear an apology? Kimberly, I know how it must have looked when Amy came out of the shower the other day. Looked? Okay. Sounded like. Felt like. But it isn't. What I had with her is over. Everyone at school knows your bail was set at a quarter of a million dollars. I mean, no one would put that kind of money... I told her to leave. That was less than an hour ago. Now, what do you say? I don't know. Maybe I can take a study break. About in an hour. What is your problem? I gotta check something out on the case. I'll be back. Hurry back. I'll be back. I'll be waiting. You promised me you were leaving. I most certainly did not. I told you I wanted what was best for you. Just obviously my help. Are you gonna give me a hand up or not? 
right to the door. You're not hearing my theory? I don't even want to think about any theory you might have. It's obvious that you need me. Your brain is so fogged in from that vapid co-ed from law school, so I guess I'll just wait till you beg me to tell you, Kenny! heard every possible phony story like I owe this man money so I've got to find him or he's my baby brother who ran away to sea and I'm searching for him so I'm gonna be completely honest with you there's this man I absolutely have to locate and he's wearing the same sweatshirt as you are lady you want information you pick up the phone and dial 411 I guess the kindest way to describe him would be sort of a badly dressed weasel mid-twenties <laughs> Around here, people savor their anonymity. What about a bribe? I know. An ugly word. However, I am willing to lay down on this bar 50... No. No, make that $100. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Well, then I guess I just have one more question. What are you serving for lunch? Burgers. Oh, I don't eat burgers. I'm a vegetarian. Burgers. You know what my favorite sandwich is? Fried egg. All I got is burgers. You have eggs. I can see them right there. Some guys like to put them in their beer. I realize this, this may seem just a little unorthodox, but I was just... Excuse me, what's your name? Al. Oh. Is that short for Alvin or Albert? Maybe Albert? <laughs> At any rate, could you just help me out with this? A lady, uh... How would it be if I made my own sandwich? Uh, I'd pay you, of course. Are you crazy? No, not seriously crazy. Just a few questions, Mr. Morgan. Fire away. Tell me, do you have your key ring on your belt? Yeah, I sure do. Every key I own's here, even the one to the moot courtroom. Never without it. You never separated from your key ring? No, sir. But you lost your keys the night of the murder, did you not? Well, yeah, he took them from me. He? Is that the only time you've been separated from your keys? Yes, sir. <laughs> so, no one... No one could have made a duplicate of the key to the rear door of the building. No, it's absolutely impossible. Tell me, Mr. Morgan, where do you live? Uh, 113 Live Oak Terrace. It's a, a fancy address for a little condo building. Is that one of those buildings with a security system? Yes, sir, it's got an alarm. About two months ago, did the alarm 
go off because someone broke into your unit? Well, not exactly. But the police were called and a report was made, was it not? Yeah. The um, city charged me $45 for a, a false alarm because I... I had to break into my own unit. Mr. Morgan, why on earth would you break into your own unit? You've told us your keys are always with you. Well, this time they weren't. I must have misplaced them. Must have misplaced them? Well, all right, I did. I lost them, but uh, I got them back. For how long were they lost? A few hours, a day, a week? A month? Well, it's not very... Long enough for someone to make a duplicate key to the rear door of the building? Objection, speculation. Sustained. Sam, we both know that if someone had a key to the rear door, that person could have entered the back of the courtroom without your knowledge. Now, isn't that true? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Redirect? No, no, Your Honor. And this court will recess for one hour. So, things with Ken are really getting serious. Romance turned to passion. Passion heading towards commitment. Of course, my parents didn't approve. But I was determined, so I brought them home for Christmas. A fatal mistake. One burger, red but not cold, pickles, onions, tomatoes on the side. Anyway, so we came down to dinner the first night with my entire family poised and waiting. Hey, Amy. And then... Weasel at 2 o'clock. Thanks. Excuse me. I think this is my game. Yeah, says who? Says Ben Franklin. Don't be so shy. We met last night. I don't know who you are. <laughs> well, that's because you ran away. Now, who starts? I'll break. Last night when I caught you breaking into the moot courtroom... Look, I... lady, I wasn't there. Eugene, my unimpeachable sources tell me that you're in charge of the video room. Now... On the night of the murder, someone was in that room. So I went back there, and I found something. But I guess it must not belong to you. Oh, too bad. Is it my shot now? What? Uh, what, what do you think you found? I think I liked it better when you were pretending to be a tough guy, Eugene. Well, what I found was... Oh, it's not my own stick. Well, what I found, way in back of one of the files where you hid it, a pirate copy of the hottest movie out right now. Let me have it. I'll cut you in. Oh, you don't have to do that. I'll give it to you. What do you want? A few answers. Don't look so worried. The questions are not that hard. And then I get the tape? Across my heart. When? Tonight. 8 p.m. Shay Charlotte. Until then, it's in a very safe place. Your Honor, I realize this shouldn't happen. I'm sorry. It's inexcusable calling a surprise witness. Your Honor, the district attorney has had ample time to prepare her case. Did you know this witness existed? Yes, we did. But we had no idea he had information relevant to the case. Mr. Mason? Your Honor, if this witness testifies, I'd like an adjournment immediately following that testimony. I'll need the entire weekend to prepare a cross-examination. Sounds fair to me. What could you possibly testify to? We'll soon find out. I thought it was your friend. Maybe. That's a big maybe.
Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name for the record. Tra <clears throat> Travis Charles Howe. Mr. Howe, where do you reside? I share an apartment off campus with the defendant, Ken Malansky. And how long have you known the defendant? Oh, we met the first year of law school. We've been roommates the last two. I show you People's Exhibit 7, a knife previously identified as the murder weapon, and ask you if you saw it somewhere on the night of the murder. Yes, in our apartment. And how did you happen to see it? Well, I, I was in the apartment studying, and all of a sudden, Ken blew in like a hurricane. I, I, I have never seen anyone so mad. He was opening drawers and, and going through his closet, and the whole time he was yelling about... Uh, about, about what Frank had done to Kimberly. And did he find what he was looking for? Yes, in his backpack. It was the knife. What happened then? Well, he said he wanted to find Frank. What did you do? Well, uh, the whole time he was looking, I, I was trying to calm him down. When he said that about finding Frank, I, I tried to stop him. Then what happened? He pushed me down and told me to stay out of it. He said... He... He said he was going to get Frank. And then he left. Mr. Howe... Why didn't you come forward sooner with this information? I'd, I'd gone to see Ken when he was in jail. He was really nervous. He, he told me to lie about the knife. He's my roommate. He, he's my friend. I, I, I thought I was doing the right thing. <laughs> Thank you. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. Pursuant to stipulation, this court is now in recess until Monday morning at 10 a.m. Mr. Howe, you're instructed to return to the stand at that time. You may step down. Court is adjourned. Never went back to the apartment. Mr. Mason, please control your client or he'll be held in contempt. Damn it, what are you trying to do to me? Get! I decided to forgive you instead of leaving because I have wonderful news. I doubt it. I made a major breakthrough in the case. Amy, I've had kind of a rough day, okay? I want to hear about it. You can tell me while we're driving. All right. Have it your way. But I should tell you that we have an appointment to meet the real killer. I invited him to join us for dinner. I think someone at the law school killed Frank for a personal motive. What if it was almost like an accident? You really think it was Eugene? Think about it. He's up there using the tape equipment in a felonious manner, and Frank walks in on him. Things get rowdy, and Eugene nails him. With my knife? <laughs> oh. Good point. Well, we'll see. Don't you think we ought to let Mr. Mason in on our little adventure? And please, let's not bother Mr. Mason until we have something tangible. That's pretty good. The seafood's a specialty here. Is it nice? Okay. I thought you said this was a popular place. Best in town. And where is everybody? Oh, I bought out the first city. First what? Don't worry. This is a secret meeting with a murder suspect. We couldn't have a lot of people around. Here he comes. Did you 
bring the tape? What is this, Jean? No hello? How's it going? No drink first just to be social? I believe you've met Ken. And yes, I have brought the tape. Provided you've brought some answers. We know you were in the video room the night of the murder. You're the one who ran out, weren't you? I wasn't. Can you prove that? I was with the guys that want that tape. Where is it? Not so fast, Eugene. We're not finished yet. Did you see anybody else that night? I told you I wasn't there. Now, could I have the tape? No. You're making a mistake. I don't think so. We'll see. What do you mean by that? I don't know. What do we do now? Regroup. Check, please. I'll get the car. about the murder but take some good advice forget you ever saw me because the guys i work for are really mean they'll kill you and enjoy it are you all right i can't wait to hear your next play come here it's all right mr allen that map of the city sets forth among other things the area around the law school. That familiar to you? Yes, sir, it is. Now, Kimberly McDonald swore that on the evening of the murder, my client left her apartment at uh, 1162 Long Ridge Road at five minutes after seven. Please mark the map accordingly. Don't forget the time. Now, where is the law school? Right here. The security officer on the scene testified he walked into the moot court at 721 and discovered Ken Melansky standing next to the body of Frank Wellman, Jr. Now, sir, when did you see Ken at your apartment? Which is where? Um, right here. I, I don't know exactly, uh, about quarter past seven. A lot, a lot of things were happening. I didn't look at my watch. That means Mr. Melansky drove from Kimberly's apartment to your apartment to the law school in 16 minutes. Now, you've lived in this town for three years. Is it really possible to do that? Well, it'd be tight, but yeah, you could do it. Now, what if Ken Melansky was driving in a reckless manner? and got pulled over by the police at Moore Park and Fourth. I'll wait for you, Mr. Howe. Please mark your map. Now, what if he got a ticket at Moore Park and Fourth? Would he still have had time for that trip? I, I wouldn't know. Well, assume the ticket was written at 7.12 and the officer took five minutes to write it. How would that be possible when you say at that very moment, Ken Melansky was tearing up your apartment looking for his knife? There's no answer to your question because it's hypothetical. 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 No, Mr. Howe. Here is the ticket Mr. Melansky received at exactly 7.12. Now, uh, perhaps you'd like to review your recollection of that evening. 
The location where he got the ticket is in a direct line between Kimberly's apartment and the law school. Now, what would Ken be doing there? I don't know. He was going directly from Kimberly's to the law school. He never went home, he never searched for the knife, and you never saw him. Isn't that true, Mr. Howe? Mr. Howe. You have one last chance to reconsider your testimony. I assume you know the penalties for perjury. Um, maybe I... Maybe I'm, I'm mistaken about what happened that evening. More than mistaken, Mr. Howe. I have no further questions. At this time, Your Honor, the people request a brief recess. We'll reconvene in 15 minutes. Brilliant piece of work, Harry. Someone's trying to hang my client. Travis? He was working for somebody else? Unfortunately, neither of you could have known about the speeding ticket. What are you talking about? Would you like me to show you a letter from his bank? After you met with him four days ago, a large sum of money went into his account. Now, I want to know what the hell you thought you were doing. Harry... Ken Melansky is innocent. He's guilty. He killed my son. Frank? Getting Travis Howe to perjure himself is a crime. Well, what are you going to do, send me to jail? I call Frank Wellman to the stand. You know, sir, that you have my deepest sympathy, but I must ask you some difficult questions. Your son did well at law school. Was that something of a surprise? No. He was a hard worker. But he did have a rather poor undergraduate record, did he not? Well, he wasn't the kind of boy who spends his Saturday nights in the library. He enjoyed people. He liked to party, drank quite a bit. Was arrested many times for drunk driving, was he not? He was never convicted for driving under the influence. Never. Why not, Mr. Wellman? Mr. Wellman, why not? I spoke to friends who could understand what a thing like that would mean on his record. I took responsibility. You used your influence to get him off. You might say that. And when he broke a young man's neck in a bar fight, Mr. Wellman? I was settled out of court. Isn't it true that your son was spoiled and violent? That he never had to face up to life because you provided more... My son... My son loved me, and he would have done anything for me. I would have done anything for him as well. Your Honor, the state fails to see the relevancy of this whole line of questioning. The people will stipulate that the decedent came from a rich family, if that's what Mr. Mason is after. It is not, Your Honor. I'm exploring the character of the decedent to show that someone other than my client may have had motive. The court will allow this on the representation that counsel will connect it up.
One last question. Did you buy your son's way into law school? No, I did not. You did make several large contributions while his application was pending, did you not? One for more than a million dollars for the moot courtroom? I did what any father would have done for his son. The difference being that I had the money to do it with. No further questions, Your Honor. I thank the witness for his honesty. We'll take our lunch recess at this time. Court will be adjourned until one o'clock. Can't wait for me outside. Take that letter now. I paid for it. Yes, I believe you did. This isn't from a bank. This is a damned fundraiser for the law school. That's right, Frank. It's a hell of a way to treat a friend. Friend? Here it is, just like I promised. Good. And it's not that I don't trust you, but... No, it wasn't easy to get it, but when I make a promise to you, Answer Vic, you question. can count on me to follow through with it. Are you crazy? What the hell are you trying to do? There's some mistake. She promised me that it... Mistake? Oh, there's definitely been a mistake. My mistake. I could have got some pros to pirate for me, but no, I trust you. I even send you to video school. And why? Because you're from the neighborhood. And I like you. But that's just the kind of guy that I am. Vic, let me In a moment, true. Eugene. Is it not true? There's something you have to understand. You swore to me that you could break the transfer codes and give me the three-quarter inch mask. Will you turn the damn thing off? It's giving me a headache. The three-quarter inch mask is for the guy in Rio who's going to pay me $100,000 for every master tape from that movie. And now, you're forcing me to... I know where it is. Give me one more chance. All right. You got 12 hours. And after that, we'll make a different kind of movie. A snuff film. I don't know if this was such a hot idea. If I didn't come, he wouldn't show up. No, Amy, that's not what I mean. Don't you think the limo is a little overstated? You try and hail a cab in this area. Eugene, you made me a rich woman. I bet Ken, you'd really be here. Pay up. Put it on my tab. That makes $250,005 I owe you. You gave me the wrong tape. Are you trying to get me killed? Those guys want to take my head off. You didn't tell us what we want to know. Tough. Give me the tape. Eugene, where are your manners? Ken, make him say please. Yeah, say please. This time I decided not to take any chances. Let's step outside. Let me give you some free legal advice. Right now, all we got on you is pirating video cassettes. Make us go someplace we don't want to go. Then we're talking major felony territory. I'll take it under advisement. Now move. Last chance. This place is full of cops. Encourage her to shut up. Police! Three! Hold it!
sir. Damn you! She weren't in the courtroom the night of the murder. Who was? How do I know? Thank you, Gene. Now someone from the class must have been there. I don't know. If they're getting closer, it would be a shame if you were to fall. Wait, wait, uh, this kid paid me to show him how to use the equipment. Maybe it was him. What's his name? Oh, thank heavens you're back. Everything turned out fine. Good. Well, I can't say I approve of you two playing detective, but there's nothing like results. Well, the night is still young. Is there anything else we can do? She has the limo booked for the entire evening. You should be in bed, asleep. I want him looking fresh and relaxed and innocent in the morning. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> On our way. <laughs> bye bye. They make a lovely couple. Yeah, I suppose. What's the matter? We're missing something. I don't know what it is, but there's something missing. If you need me for anything. Perry. Good night. It's just a trifle. Spain, please rephrase your question. What happened that night, officer? An objection now, counsel is calling for a narrative. Sustained. Listen, uh, thanks for everything. What did I do? Just risk my life to save you. It was nothing, really. I'm really very grateful. That's why I did it. For a little simple gratitude. Looking innocent, I guess you'd better. We call Scott McDonald to the stand. Mr. McDonald, I've been looking at your record. I notice you do much better in classes where you write papers instead of taking tests for your grade. Now, why is that? Sometimes, sometimes I clutch under pressure, I guess. The paper in your hand is one on which you received an A. It's on constitutional law. Do you mind reading aloud page three, paragraph two? Yet is, it is the creation of a constitutional government structured by a deep separation of powers that significantly marks the profound conviction born of experience that, that human, human beings occupying, occupying positions, positions of leadership, leadership must, must be restrained, restrained by forces more potent than their own 
arbitrary discretion. I'm sorry you stopped, Mr. McDonald. Mr. Justice Lattimore has always been a favorite of mine. Yours too, I take it. Now, you plagiarized that paper from him, did you not? Yes. What did your sister say when she found out? She must have been very angry. Yes, she was. Frank Wellman, Jr. knew about your cheating. Isn't that so? No, no, he didn't. Did he not? The videotape of the moot court trial shows that this book of Lattimore on Frank's table wasn't needed for the trial. He had it there so you'd see it. So that you'd be constantly reminded that he could expose you. Once exposed, he'd have been thrown out of school, never to practice law, never to be law partners with your sister. That's not true. He told you to throw the trial, did he not? Kimberly and I were beating him. We were going to win. No, you were not. I was there, remember? I didn't understand why you were doing so badly. Now we know, don't we? Mr. McDonald, I was the last person to leave the courtroom on the night of the murder. And this book was there, on the table. But in the police photos of the crime scene, this book is gone. Only the killer could have taken it. Your Honor, can't you see he's badgering the witness? Young lady, please be quiet. Mr. Mason. You, uh, framed Ken Malansky, did you not? No. Mr. McDonald, this is a preliminary hearing. But suppose it were a full jury trial. This jury box would have 12 people in it. 12 people, all looking at you, listening to you, staring at you. 12 people sitting here, watching, and waiting for the truth. Now, Mr. McDonald, the courtroom video technician is prepared to testify that you paid him quite a lot of money to teach you how to use the equipment. Now, this videotape shows Frank Wellman Jr. rehearsing his summation in the moot court. Mr. McDonald, you were the one person capable of operating that video equipment who knew that Frank Wellman Jr. would be there that night. Now, you taped Frank Wellman doing that summation, did you not? Don't say anything, Scott. I will not tolerate your behavior, young lady. Your Honor, Miss McDonald's vocal outbursts have been a great puzzlement to me, but I think I'm no longer perplexed. It's her brother, our witness, Scott McDonald, has to be in constant communication with his sister. He feels compelled beyond reason to see her, and if he cannot do that, he needs to hear her voice. Here is a copy of the tape. I give it to you. Mr. McDonald, it took two people to commit this crime. Your sister manipulated her roommate, Donna Lehman, making sure Ken would come to the courtroom. You made sure it would appear that Frank Wellman was still alive. By playing that tape. Everyone has thought you dominated your sister. But that's not true, is it, Scott? She's the reason you're here today. She wanted revenge for the assault by Frank Wellman. And you were willing because of the blackmail. Isn't that true, Scott? Isn't it? The 
listen to me, Scott. Are you going to pay for a crime you did not commit alone? No. I didn't kill him. She did. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kim. I can't. <laughs> No more, Your Honor. Your Honor, the people move to dismiss the charges against Kenneth Malansky. Yeah. Case dismissed. Miss Prosecutor, I direct you to take all steps necessary to see to it that Scott and Kimberly McDonald are arrested for this crime. You, you ruined it. You ruined everything. You ruined it. Hey, buddy. Congratulations. Thanks, Jeff. Good job, man. Congratulations. Congratulations. Right. Cool. Take care. Yeah. Ken, I'm really sorry. Get it, Bella. Sorry. I'll see you in class. Yeah. Well, I'd like to do more. But all I can say is thank you. It's in a... Where's Amy? Well, earlier she said she was going to go pick up her $250,000 bail money and uh, leave town. That's what you've been telling her to do. Congratulations. Yeah. I guess so. You guess? She was totally irresponsible, recklessly unpredictable. And if you don't go after her this second, I'll personally see to it that you never, ever practice law. Not one word. Amy! Wait! What is it? I know. You just want to make sure that I'm absolutely leaving town. That I'm gone, out of your life forever. Well, don't worry. I I have your first-class ticket to Tahiti. Oh, it should make you overjoyed. Are you finished? Because I came down here to tell you I... <sighs> Thank you. You're welcome. Wait. And also, that... What? <laughs> what? That running away from me was the biggest mistake you ever made. And that you'll do anything. Anything to get me back. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, are you happy? Of course. It's just that a woman likes to hear these things from the man she adores. Then why are you driving away from me? This is my third time around the block. Three times. No. As always, I'll get you the first time around. 